Okay, so now back in 3ds Max, we're ready to go ahead and project our high polygon model onto our low polygon model. For starters, we need to take and hide our body mesh. Again, I just opened up the file that we saved. I saved it as AAA tutorial with the chess piece, the original low poly. And I'm going to import our high polys. Now I have my low poly here. I'm going to file and I'm going to select import. And I'm going to go to my desktop. Go to export at OBJ, select my high poly upper chest and click open. Now first thing you want to do is go to preset and make sure you go down and select your ZBrush preset. And we're going to import this as a single mesh. So make sure you check the box import as single mesh. That's very important otherwise you'll get each of these will be an individual uh, mesh object. So import a single mesh and click import. <laughs> and there's the 1,321,000 vertices. This thing is extremely high. Your computer may bog down a little bit when you get to this stage, so just uh, bear with it and be patient with your uh, with your computer. So now we're going to select the low poly mesh. Make sure you have the low poly mesh selected. Go to here to cylinder 001 was the name of my low poly, and I'm going to come up here. I'm going to select rendering. And I'm going to select render to texture. Once you're, you're going to get a window that's going to pop up, we're going to come in here, and I want you to, as I'm going through here, I want you to make sure your settings are identical to my settings. You know, if I have a box checked, make sure on your options you have a box checked, because I don't know if maybe I might have changed a setting or something. I don't think I did, but, you know, just make dead sure that your settings are identical to mine. So in projection map, I'm going to go ahead and click Enabled, and I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to select Pick. And you're going to pick the high poly upper chest and click add. Give it a minute. This is where it's really going to slow down. So now it's calculating. It's creating a cage that we're going to adjust. Now you see this crazy looking thing that just popped out here. What we got to do is we have to adjust this to make it more accurate. So first thing you're going to do is drop down your cage menu and click on shaded, which is this box here. That'll shade your cage. And we want to go ahead and reset it. So just click down here and click reset. Now it's reset to the low poly mesh. Now under push, we're going to take the amount. We're just going to take here and kind of drag it up. You know, so as you can see, what I'm doing is I'm making sure that everything from the high poly mesh is inside of the cage. I'm going to make sure everything is. All right, don't leave anything out. All right, um, if I zoom in and kind of see part of the bottom here is out, but everything else is in. I don't want to kind of drag it out anymore. So what I can do is come up here to the cage selection and select the vertices. I can select one of the vertices of the cage near the problem area, go under soft selection, click use soft selection, drop that down to where it's kind of close to the area. You can kind of see it. And then I'll hit W on my keyboard to select my move and I'll just drag that out. Just like moving vertices for any object. I'm going to check the other breast here. And I got a couple more over here so I'm going to drag these out as well. So if you don't do this, uh, it'll get missed when we create the normal map, and you, it'll just be like black in your normal map. So you want to make sure that everything is within the boundaries of the cage. So right here, I can kind of maybe hold down Control and select some vertices around this area and kind of drag them out so this gets caught in the normal map. So analyze your cage very closely. Make sure there are no... You kind of want to get close to to make sure you don't miss anything. So just kind of go over your entire mesh and make sure everything on your cage, there's nothing poking through. All right, so here we go. We're really good. I'm going to deselect this. Now I'm going to come over here. I'm going to select under projection options and click options. I'm going to click under global super sampler setup. And I've come down here under global super sampling and I'm going to click Enable Global Super Sampler. Then you can close this window and close that window. And I'm going to drag this window down just by clicking anywhere and left, you know, left clicking and dragging. Now this is important under mapping coordinates. Yours is probably going to be like this. Set it to use existing channel because we already have a UV map. So click use existing channel on both the object and the sub object. Drag it on down. Now we got to come over here into the output and we're going to select add. And we're creating a normals map. So select that and click add element. And we want to set up the width and the height to 2048 by 2048. Make sure your target map slot is on your diffuse color. 
all right and then under file name and type just click this three dots here I'm gonna to go to my desktop and I'm gonna save this as the upper chest normal so upper chest underscore in and I'm gonna save it as a DDS and then delete this file extension here select DDS and click Save now I want it as a DXT1 because there's not any I don't have any alpha channel for this so a DXT1 will be just uh, with no alpha and click OK again make sure I'm gonna scroll through real quick make sure all your settings and boxes are identical to mine so just check it you know with yours to make sure they're identical to my settings here and as soon as you're sure everything's identical just go ahead and come down here and click render now it's baking the high poly to the low poly there's our scaled upper chest now it doesn't look like a normal map yet but wait till we open up in Photoshop you'll be like wow that's nice so there we go there's our normal map and now you're looking if you see any red it'll be very explicit you'll see this bright red spot that means your cage missed it you need to adjust your cage it appears if I look at this that I got everything there's nothing missing anywhere in here so I got the whole thing got in here the first time around that's good go ahead and close this I'm gonna close this I'm gonna go ahead and minimize 3ds max open up Photoshop close that scales and I'm just gonna drag my upper chest underscore and DDS into here and click OK and there you have it a high quality studio normal map so now we need to uh, apply this to our model but we need to make you know we have to skin and do some of the normal stuff that we always have to do to our model but before we do anything I always like to really explicit this and to do that I'm going to right click on the background and duplicate it and just click OK and then on the background copy I'm going to go into blending options select that and I'm going to drop down the blend mode and I'm going to select overlay and if you kind of look at what that did see how it is before and then when I select it now it's really explicit it kind of just brings everything out and then I can go ahead and file save as and I'll just save it as the upper chest as a DDS to save it as the same file just overwrite the original click save okay and I don't have an alpha yet so I'm gonna click no alpha and click save ah, for some reason this had an alpha okay I don't care about it <laughs> Let's give it a second to save. All right, there's my normal map is set up. So now I can come back into this program and I no longer need that high poly mesh. I'm gonna take the high poly upper chest, I'm just gonna delete it. And I'm going to right click on the projection on the low poly and I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. Now we can right click and unhide all and we can set this up so we can export it as a NIF file. So first thing I'm going to right click convert it to an editable mesh. I'm not going to bother putting a smooth modifier on it. It's a very flat mesh. <laughs> right now it is. Wait till you see it in game with that normal map. You're going to be like wow that flat mesh is going to be just so detailed. Uh, let's go ahead and skin wrap it. Just do the usual stuff. So I'm going to come down skin wrap, face deformation, and it's down. And I found a really good way uh, I kind of picked this up from actually watching a script is to set this to 0 0.001 on face deformation blend it to the base mesh set the blend distance to a 10 and weight all points this actually comes out really well for skinning uh, so I've started to do this with everything I'm gonna click add I'm gonna select the body give it a second and then right click and convert that to skin uh oh that's right I remember Kind of mess that up right click delete this you got to re-import the body so delete this body because remember we welded vertices before and um, exported it so i'm going to go ahead and import go to desktop nice ulala custom body and i'm going to select my upper body open it i already have a skeleton so i'm going to import that didn't have a skin on it because i converted it if you recall a couple videos back we did that so i didn't have anything to skin to there we go. Now let's try that again. So I'm going to go to skin wrap. I'm going to select face deformation, 001, blend face mesh, add the body. Wait a second. Right click, convert that to a skin. And then I'll go ahead and delete my skin wrap. 
Now I need to add a BS Dismember Skin modifier. I use custom slot armor. So I'm going to just import one of my custom slot armors. Go to my disassemble, find one of my upper chests. This one will work just fine. Open it. Import it. Copy the BS Dismember. And I'm going to go ahead and paste that BS Dismember on this. So I have an upper chest BS Dismember. All right. I'm going to go ahead and right click. I hide the body because I don't export with body anymore. I always export for individual custom equip so people can mash up armors. Uh, and I'll go ahead and file and export this. Now I'll go to nice blah, blah, And I guess I'm just going to put this in my disassembled folder. And I'll add it to one of these new files here. Is this in custom body armors? No, it's not. Custom body armor is disassembled, and I'll add it somewhere in here. Uh, upper chest B2. So just export your NIF file however you want. And I'll just go ahead and put it there. Save. And export. There we go. So now we're ready. we got to kind of set up a texture file for this. So what we can do, first off, is I want to select this, and I need to export a UV map, something I can texture on. So I'm going to select my editable mesh. I'm going to drop it down. I'm going to go to unwrap the UVW, open in UV editor. And what I am going to do is I'm going to file, render a UVW template. I'm going to do it 2048 by 2048. Uh, no force two-sided. I can leave that check. That doesn't matter. Go down to solid. The fill of a white. Okay. Not any visible edges or seam edges under the UVW. There we go. I'm going to save this so I can paint on it. I'll just save it on my desktop as a DDS. We'll call this the upper chest B2 underscore D for diffuse. And there we go. That's good. That's good. Now I can open up Photoshop and start texturing my upper chest. I'm going to show you really uh, a neat trick for getting the scales textured. This is just a just something to keep in mind. You can do it this way. This is uh, how I would do it. All right, go ahead and flatten the image. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select everything here. I'm going to copy it, come over here, create a new layer, and I'm going to paste it in there. And now what I'm going to do with this new layer is I'm going to take uh, the levels or, well, I'm going to basically black and white this sucker like that. And that, uh, that kind of gives me a texture sh directly for scales. I can actually use this texture for scales. Um, I can even go into my levels and I can uh, kind of darken it. So it gives me like a, it's just a trick because I, if I, if I put a, environment map on this it's going to reflect and it's going to look really nice you'll see when i get it in game you'll see what i'm talking about this is kind of a trick for texturing scales so uh, i'm going to select these three layers right click and i'm just going to go ahead and um, merge those three and i don't want this or that so what i'm going to do is i'm going to select this layer and go like this i'm just going to select all of these oops actually go like that and then I can hit minus yeah anyways that was the trick I wanted to show you I'm gonna go ahead and texture the rest of this so I'm gonna jump forward in the video I just wanted to show you the trick for getting a texture on your scales just a quick way to texture them and you can even uh, add a light on them or something to change the color of them if you want to but that's just a quick way to get texture on your scales and I'm gonna add an environment map to this so they reflect the environment around them this just a just a quick little trick um, you can even maybe see what it looks like if I invert it mm, I don't know I liked it the other way <laughs> but anyways I'm gonna jump forward